Life in a Nutshell, Tales Through the Eyes of the Fra, Chapter 6, Fran and Bob. Today is Father's Day, 2021. To all the fathers, enjoy your day. Bob Carney and Francis Chapa met on a blind date, Labor Day weekend, 1956. When he knocked on the door that Sunday morning, noonday, I beg your pardon, her sister Wanda slipped a dollar in her pocket in case she needed to get home alone. But the date went well. If Bob were alive today, he'd tell you it was love at first sight. He fell for the blonde, blue-eyed girl from Lincoln Heights, Taylor. We had been set up by an older cousin of Bob's, whom I had just met at a wedding the night before. He told Bob he had met the girl Bob should marry. We were engaged in three weeks and married nine months after we met, and remained married for 51 years until Bob's death in 2008. My version? Who doesn't like to be in a whirlwind, being swept off their feet? Bob was a little taller than me, so that scored a point. He was 26, I was 20 years old. I thought he was worldly, and he had a job with the DL&W Railroad. He was loving and attentive, and I was infatuated. When I look back, I realize I did need someone like him. We were in love. Bob planned and executed our wedding for June 8, 1957. It was beautiful. A priest relative of his performed the ceremony at my home church, St. Peter's and Paul's. We hired a polka band for the reception. We honeymooned in the Poconos, and our first home together was in Bloomfield, New Jersey. We immediately had a beautiful son, Timothy Francis. Another beautiful son, Kevin David, followed in 18 months. And then a third beautiful son arrived 16 months later. Can you believe three children under three years of age before our fourth wedding anniversary? We had lots of fun raising three boys. They were active in everything available, took music lessons, excelled in schoolwork. They went on their own after college. So I only feel responsible for the first 18 years. And those years flew by. It was hard for me, a demanding situation, but I believe I did okay. I always held the babies for feeding. <laughs> did you get me my finger licking there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I always held the babies for feeding. No propping of the bottle for me. I tried to evenly distribute my time. Terry, my sister, always said I was the only mother who actually raised three individual only children. Bob was helpful. The only thing he would not do was feeding in the middle of the night. I didn't mind because I was a stay-at-home mom and he worked on the railroad. R.D. was a true railroader, starting with the DL and W, then Erie, finally Conrail. A union man all his life, he knew all the rules and regulations. He could recite the book by heart. There were many instances when co-workers contacted him for the correct information. Our home life was never conventional. Being that R.D., as he was called on the job, led crazy on call hours, the children and I adapted. Sleep was Bob's main priority, so he had, we had to leave the home regularly. Although I didn't like to drive, the children and I made many, many trips to local parks, museums, and tourist trips, traps. Life was never boring. The boys knew we were okay as long as we were on Macadam. Living on a strict budget, I am surprised we were able to accomplish as much as we did. Summer camp with the scouts was a must and bus trips to various places of interest tie on a list of what to do. There was a basketball court out back for the teenagers and a 24 foot round pool to cool off. Friends were always welcome and they recognized this. Our life, our married life centered on the children. They were wanted, welcomed, loved. They brought much joy into our lives. My home life, completely different from Bob's, gave us different perspectives on discipline. I babied them, he toughened them, or so we thought. And that is why they are perfect. We were a loud family. After arguments or disagreements, whatever you want to call them, I could stay mad at Bob forever. Sometimes he didn't even know I was still mad at him. He could forgive and forget immediately, but I never threw anything at him. 
I knew I'd have to be the one to clean up the mess. Bob was never lazy. He always provided a roof over our heads, good food, and good medical care. He played baseball, football, basketball, and went swimming regularly. A true sports fan as he aged, he did gamble on games. At the casinos, he played the slot machines. Never won. He had a great sense of humor, loved to read, Michener was his favorite author, and was a good dancer. He loved people and therefore talked too much. He never accomplished the art of photography, but this never stopped him from shooting rolls of film. In the early years of my marriage, I belonged to a poker card club. We called ourselves WNO, Women's Night Out. Not much cards were played, but we had lots of laughs. Around 1970, I took a part-time job, which lasted 18 years. I then went full-time until I retired in 2001, reaching the wonderful age of 65. In my professional life, I was a billing clerk, secretary, bookkeeper. I have tried many things. I took swim lessons, bowling lessons, even was chairman of a banquet one year. I was secretary of the bowling league for three years. I took sewing and tailoring lessons. I tried all different exercise classes, ceramic classes, and computer classes, piano lessons. Aunt Wanda and I even went to baking bread lessons. I volunteered in the school library and was an officer in the Altern Rosary Society. At Den Mother for three and four years, I also volunteered at sport functions the children were involved in. What I mostly enjoyed for myself was the over 30 years subscription to the Broadway Theater League. At some point in our later years, Bob and I traveled quite a bit. I was to Europe 10 times and Canada too many times to count. We did only one cruise to Alaska, but didn't care for the ocean voyage. Vacations with Bob were usually in the United States, mostly Northern, because he never really liked the, sun, the sunburn and peel skin that his Irish heritage allotted to him. We had our share of happiness, joy, good times, bad times, job losses and illnesses over the years. The glue that held us together was probably our need for each other, our Roman Catholic faith, and especially our precious children. Life is not the same since Bob passed away in 2008. Our genes live on in our children, six grandchildren, and we now have three great-grandchildren. Thank you everyone for being in my life. God bless you. Love to all.